What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Berg's Dip Reviews channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Andrew, also known as Berg's. No review today. What we're going to be talking about today is underage dipping. And I uh, just want to cover some of the what goes on um, buying underage, dipping underage, some of the laws. Um, it's not a video that promotes dipping underage. It's just kind of I'm acknowledging the fact that most people start dipping, smoking, even drinking, whatever you want to say, they start to do it before the legal age takes place. So, uh, um, before we go any further, why don't we pack some uh, Copenhagen Mint and pack a lip with me if you'd like. Alright, so now that you've got your lip packed as well, let's talk about first uh, some of the ways people get dip underage. Obviously, before I even go into that, the easiest thing to do if you didn't start dipping already would be just to wait until you are the legal age. 18, 19 in some states. I believe Hawaii just raised theirs to 21. And there's a couple other places, cities and towns, where they've raised it to 21. Um, I don't really agree with that, but that's a different, uh, different subject. So anyway, if you are underage and you are dipping, what people generally do are the following things. Uh, number one, have an older sibling, uh, a parent if that fits your situation. Um, a friend that's older, a friend's sibling that's older, somebody who is of age buy the dip for you, basically. So, this is technically illegal, but how can anybody really enforce that is what I'd like. I mean, if you send your, your brother out who happens to be 19 for dip and he comes back and you pay him in your house, like, who the hell would know? Um... That actually uh, reminds me of something else. One time I was in line at, a, at uh, Wawa, I believe, and the lady, the customer who was at least like 30s, 40s, uh, said, can I have a pack of whatever kind of cigarettes? I think that's what she wants or something, meaning her mother. I overheard the conversation, and the cashier says, sorry, we can't sell tobacco to anybody except the, the customer themselves. I was like, well, damn. Here we're talking about people, two people that were well over the age of 18, and this particular chain of stores is infamous for carting everybody, so uh, I was shocked, but also not that surprised that they would do something like that. So that's not usually the case, but anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So anyway, having someone of age buy it for you is probably the least risky way you can do it. Now, next thing is fake IDs. I don't recommend fake IDs at all. It's, it's not a good way to go. There's basically two types of fake IDs. You'll have one type where people are making them. They don't necessarily, they won't, in that case, they're not going to scan into the system. Um, but I don't know. You see them online and different shit like that. Uh, I don't recommend that. The other way with a fake ID is you take someone's actual ID of age, have them get a duplicate, and you keep theirs. I mean, that's, I mean, then, then you're talking, you know, is that identity theft and all that? Well, I, I don't recommend that. You're going to get your, if you get caught with that, you get your ass in trouble and you're going to get this other person in trouble. So, Fake IDs, I would I would not recommend at all. Um, I do have an interesting story about that also. A um, buddy of mine lived in a small town north of here. Uh, he used a fake ID. The gas station owner caught it, but instead of like 
you know, turning them in or anything like that. All he did was tape it up to the window in the store so that, and this is a small town, so everybody could see uh, what happened there. So, anyway, I, I wouldn't recommend it. it. Just not a good idea. Um, and actually, that's why a lot of gas stations won't, well, one of the more strict ones won't uh, accept an expired ID because of that. If you got a duplicate, you wouldn't be able to renew it because of all that shit. But anyway, just, just avoid that whole thing. That's, you know, there you're talking about much more serious penalties. Then your last option when you uh, run out of sending people, because remember, if you have somebody else buying it for you, they're probably going to charge you a little bit more because nobody does anything for free, <laughs> basically. If they're smart about it, you know, they're going to charge you a little extra, which I would say would be fair. So if you get tired of doing that, you're going to have to uh, basically try and buy uh, and hope they don't card you. So, some tips on that. Number one, because I did this back in the day, avoid the uh, corporate-owned stores. Generally speaking, they will be the most strict. I mentioned Wawa, that's up here in PA. Sheets is up there. They're a little less strict, but I still get carded there a good percentage of the time. Um, I haven't really had that much experience with Speedway, but I'm sure they're similar. Turkey Hill, which is also a PA corporate-owned store, um, they're pretty strict. You want to look for the people that are basically uh, independently running the stores because they're probably more in it for just making the money. Um, and don't think as you pass an Exxon or a Shell or a Sitco that it's corporate-owned. Most of the time, those type of stores are independently owned and franchised. So uh, basically you just got to do a little research before and you, you know, or trial and error basically. Um, now I don't want to be stereotypical or any kind of shit like that, but it seems to me that foreigners running gas stations generally are more lenient. Now, I mean, that's not always the case, but personal experience, it seems that people, uh, foreigners, and one thing I want to also talk about is most of the time these people come from India, people generally call them Arabs and Muslims and all this. Well, that's not true, generally. Most of the time, it's uh, people from India that are actually running the stations. Another story, back in the day, my friend used to smoke cigarettes all the time. We would go to the 7-Eleven that was run by an Indian family. And he was on a first name basis with the guy. And uh, when I would go in, I would have no problem. So then I start going in myself and they didn't recognize me without him there. Um, the, the mother or whatever would always ask, would ask sometimes um, if the younger guy was there that knew us well. He would just say, you don't need ID, you, you just need to come in more often, or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is the kind of shit that, sorry about that, that would go on. Um, and I mean, we would, I mean, the other kid that I was with would come in, and we went to Catholic high school, he would come in in a school uniform and sell to him. Like, he did, this place did not give a shit. So... What I also want to add to this is that I was a, a cashier at a gas station for about a year. Every cashier, no matter what store, I would say has a different, uh, different risk mentality, you know, because there are pretty hefty fines and you may have to go to court if you get caught selling. So keep that in mind. Don't, you know, I know a lot of the younger guys are ready to just curse out all the people that don't sell to them and different things like that. Just keep in mind that the cashier, whether they agree with you dipping or smoking or whatever underage or not, is more worried about uh, getting caught than anything. So one way, which may or may not work, 
is if you become a regular at this store, maybe you don't buy dip there yet, but maybe you start buying all your drinks there and different things like that. Over time, they kind of get to know who you are. They recognize you. And, you know, and then one day you're just like, ah, oh, Copenhagen Wintergreen or whatever. And then they, they're probably more likely to sell to you because they see you as a regular. They think I've probably carted in before, you know, whatever. That doesn't work for all cashiers, all stores, you know. A lot of it is going to be trial and error. Now, remember that in most states, simply possessing tobacco is not a crime. In Pennsylvania, there's no law about uh, just having tobacco on you. So um, you don't really have to worry about that. You may have to in your town, city, whatever. But, you know, it's not, all, it's not everywhere. So, and another thing, it's not like alcohol. If you get, if you don't have your ID or whatever, they can't really do anything. They don't care. You just say sorry and you're on your way. You know, there's no like, uh, you know, people are often nervous about, about going in without their ID and getting turned down. Well, nothing's going to happen to you. They're just going to send you on your way. The only way they would call the police on you is if you became a nuisance and like demanded it and came in repeatedly day after day and kept getting denied then you would probably be like all right you know i'll stop coming in here you're starting to get to be a pain in the ass basically so all i'm really getting at is if you've made the decision that you're going to dip underage or whatever because the vast majority of people have started below the age of 18. Um, whether it's right or wrong, I don't think it's the government's job to tell us what age we should start dipping at. I mean, I understand that they have to have a minimum, you know, but, and if you're dipping at 10, I mean, maybe you want to reconsider, but if you're 16, 17, is it really that bad? I mean, I'm not, I, I would say not, but that's coming from me. I don't have kids. I don't, you know, I, I really don't know what I would say to that because I'm not in that situation. But so what I want you to take away in, in this video, I highly uh, recommend that you don't use a fake ID because the penalties for that are, are, are more than, you know, you're better off just and, and word of mouth kind of travels around, especially when you live in a smaller town, which stores are more lenient and which people get away with and stuff like that. But, you know, I think I covered everything pretty well. I'm not, uh, I'm not suggesting that you start dipping underage. I'm just saying that since a lot of people do, this is my experience. Um, and you have to understand from the cashier's perspective that they don't want to pay a fine because, and the store doesn't want to be caught because after a, a few, uh, if people, if they get repeatedly fined, their uh, license to sell tobacco can be suspended. So bear in mind that most gas stations, smoke shop, well, smoke shops would be their number one, but even at most gas stations, gas is, doesn't make the money. Tobacco makes the money. Um, it's usually the number one profit-making uh, product at, at gas stations. So if they lose their license or get repeatedly fined, that's definitely cutting into their profit there. And they're not going to be very happy about that. So you have to understand that they're following these laws mostly as a financial incentive. I mean... So I hope I answered all your questions. Uh, and if you like this video, like it, uh, comment, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, follow. And I'll see you next time. Take care.